Well, good evening, everybody. Listen to these words of good news from John chapter 15. These are words that Jesus says to the disciples. The counsellor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. So welcome to our time of worship as we worship Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I will see the world to come one has suffered in my place now there is grace awaiting me awaiting me judgment's done atonement's made the ransom's paid no guilt remains now there is grace awaiting me awaiting In a moment, I'll just 
offer words of prayer based on words originally written by George MacLeod. Let me also just to welcome tonight Eve Hartswood, who of course we all know. But Eve had for a time has been part of the worship team, part of the leadership team at Harriet and Stow Church. And so Eve has done much of the preaching at Harriet over the past while. And I'm delighted that Eve is going to come and preach for us tonight. So let me offer these words. Let us pray. Lord Christ, who did say to your disciples, peace be unto you. Showing to them your pierced hands and broken side. Speak also to us. Locked in our fretfulness and doubts. As we seek to know you risen and serene. And as we glimpse your hands and side. Remind us that you have also walked. In the valley of our death, you who are risen were humbled. You who are serene, your heart was broken. You who are everlasting have known death for us. Speak peace to us all. Lord Christ, we are not worthy of it. We are such cowards, Lord. Even as your disciples fled away, how often have we shrunk back or stood silent when your name has been blasphemed? Yet to those disciples you did speak peace. Speak peace to us. We are so unbelieving, Lord. Even as your disciples called the resurrection foolish talk, how often have we too tried to walk in the light of the sun, but not in the light of everlasting life. Yet to those disciples you did speak peace. Speak peace to us. Even as they, despite their life renewed, went back to the fishing. We have felt the old life tugging at us because of your difficult way. But do Jesus Christ appear to us as you did appear to them to fill our hearts with faith. Forgive the sin that ever mingles even with our holiest things. Let your resurrection light radiate all our worship by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to know ourselves as men and women who have been made new. By that same power, inspire us to walk, even as he walked, that going on our way in faith and gladness, we may come at last to those things which I hath not seen, nor ear heard, but which you have prepared for all them that truly love you from the beginning of the world. Hear our prayers, Lord Christ, and hear our prayers now in the words that you taught. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. First reading is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Salutation. Paul, called by the will of God, 
to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the Church of God, which is at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both our Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him with all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the second reading is in John chapter 14, verses 15 to 27. The promise of the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live, you will live also. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If a man loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Amen. Grace to you. Grace to you and peace. Thus Paul starts his letter to the church at Corinth. And Corinth is, at that time, a city in the Mediterranean that was full of vice and corruption. And Paul walked into that city and he started to talk about Jesus Christ. And he built a church and a church was built through Christ. And now... He writes to that church from a great distance away to bring them encouragement and to bring them direction. Grace to you and peace. Grace and peace. Grace always before peace. Because without grace you will not have peace. I wanted to bring this sermon to build on the sermon that Anne gave us a couple of weeks ago about grace and to then use the words of St Paul as he writes to the church in Corinth how he then explains to them how to use this grace so first Let's look at grace and remember grace. 
Paul is writing after the death of Jesus Christ. And in our reading today from the Gospel of John, we heard those words from Christ himself explaining that I will not be in the world very much longer. I will need to leave the world. And when I leave the world, I will leave with you the Holy Spirit. And so, grace, it comes from God. Christ is the executor of that grace. And the Holy Spirit is the guarantor of that grace. So Paul can now speak with confidence because grace, grace is guaranteed. The first thing we should know about grace surely is the salvation that is in it. Saved. Saved from what? We're surely saved from our sin and the tribulation caused by our sin. But also saved from the wrath of God when he looks upon our sin. And it was God himself who put this plan of salvation into action through his grace. Then we come to delivered. Delivered is a step beyond grace and salvation. Salvation, we're, we're saved in the here and now. Delivered is delivered to, delivered into. There is a destination for us. There is somewhere that we will be saved and safe. And Christ has gone before us to make that place for us. Salvation, deliverance. Let us look at some of the words from scripture about grace. First from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all men. All men, all humankind, everywhere, in every time, grace is given to you. Ephesians. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one should boast. We do not need to earn grace. We do not need to add up lots of good deeds in our life in order to have that grace and that salvation. But we do need to have a change of heart. A heart for faith because it is by faith that we receive grace. And from the Gospel of John, right at the beginning. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. For of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Grace is manifest in Christ and Christ is the truth of it. So if you have hold of Christ, if you have hold of the word, you also have hold of grace. Peace. Peace comes out of grace and from our readings today we hear the word from Jesus Christ himself about peace. 
Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The world, well, what does the world give us? The world gives us lots of rules, lots of regulations, lots of things that we should do. And then if we want anything from the world, it normally charges us for it. We have to pay the bills and the bills lead to tribulation. Why would one want to be on with the world? Then further on in John, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. I love that, that's fab. <laughs> I have overcome the world. Don't stand where the world is, stand where Christ is. So, St Paul, he wants to tell the church at Corinth how to use grace. And he says it's no good leaving it there, admiring it from a distance. We've got to pick it up and use it. It's like a child at Christmas. There were the presents right under the Christmas tree, just there. And they look very pretty and they look very lovely, but what's the point unless I can go over, rip the wrappers off and start enjoying the gift inside? Paul says exactly the same thing. He says, go over. Pick up the grace that you have been given. Unwrap it. Start using it. This is what grace is for. But before he starts explaining that, he gives thanks. Just like that little child at Christmas, halfway across the living room carpet, playing with the new toy. It's fantastic. Then their parents will eventually turn around and say, get back here. Get back here and thank Auntie What's Name for that present that you have just been given. Because it was Auntie What's Name who worked out what it was that you needed, who paid the price for it, and who brought it here so that you could have it. So Paul gives thanks. He says, thank you, God, for this grace that you have given us. He says, thank you, God, for this church at Corinth. And so today, we also give thanks. Thank you, God, for the church at Gallish Hills. Thank you, God, for this congregation here at St. John's. Thank you, God, for Christians in your church around the world. Thanks be to God. So Paul now sets out what the church is to do with grace got to pick it up you've got to set it to work and he is going to be he's going to know he's looking out Paul is going to know if the church of Corinth is working with grace because there's things that he's looking out for he's looking out for all speech and all knowledge all speech and all knowledge one all speech. What should we say as a Christian? What should we say as a church? We should say Jesus Christ is Lord. And that is so important. But Paul says it five times in just these nine verses. 
that we are looking at. Jesus Christ is Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to put the church of Corinth under Christ. He wants to say, look up, see Christ. Be under the authority of Christ. Because when you stand under the authority of Christ, everything that you do is then under the authority of Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. Second, all knowledge. That's not all knowledge of everything everywhere. That is all knowledge under Christ. What is this knowledge that he's looking for? It's a knowledge of grace. And Paul has an absolute confidence in that grace. He wants the church at Corinth to have an absolute confidence in that grace. And when they are confident in grace, it will be evident, evident in everything they do, everything they say, how they behave as a church. It will be clear to everyone that this church is confident in all the gifts of grace that Christ has brought to them. If you wander into a church and they're all worried about behaving as the world wants them to behave, following all the social norms of the time, getting on with all the things that the world wants them to do, then somebody wandering into that church might think, hmm, you know what, there's not a great deal of difference here, is there, between the church and the world? Be different. Don't stand where the world is, stand where Christ is. As Paul says at the beginning of his letter, the church at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ, sanctified, set aside for, holy for, the ones talking about Christ. So, he will know if they're displaying all knowledge because they will be talking about Christ. They will be different. So, Paul goes on to say, well, if you are working with grace, if you are speaking about Christ and his testimony is confirmed amongst you, you will, be not, you will not be lacking in any spiritual gift. More gifts. Not only do you have the gift of grace, now you're talking about Christ. God comes to you and says, here are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Have these in abundance. Work with these. Let these be built up amongst you so that you speak more and more and more about Christ. God is faithful. God is faithful because he gives. He gives his grace. And when you receive that grace, you also get peace. And when you speak about Christ, you also get the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Glory after glory, grace after after grace, gift after gift, so that you can say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen.